Hello beautiful people, this is Yaya Bax Nazi. Please mind the light. I cannot change it. Like it's the sun, bro. Like it's literally the sun. Like what am I supposed to do, honey? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I wish I could change locations, but I I'm very lazy. Anyways, boom, boom, boom. Today we're gonna be talking about Talfa Clements, and he is around 35 years old. He grew his brand Talfa with a couple of people, but he is the founder of Talfa Bag, and he only gains like a huge recognition. He's the light only shined upon his brand after like 15 years, y'all. 15 years, but honestly the voice of this brand and the story the journey of this brand speaks upon consistency patience um and resilience and also perseverance and i think a lot of people will find inspiration through that and he continues to inspire a lot of black designers by what he is doing so let's get into this video this is talfa clemens guys he is american he was born to two liberian parents of which is what i'm gonna get into i don't know why i'm repeating that but this is the introduction and we're gonna get into the actual actual details of this video people and i'll see you at the end of this video hopefully all right don't just jump out continue oh that was a nice one. Oh yes by the way he's been featured in vogue after nine years guys he was featured in vogue but anyways The idea that you can't or can wear something and you need to be this to do that. I think like a lot of that's disappearing. From New York City. I started making clothes when I was probably like 15. I can't wait to change the world. <laughs> As the world continues to grapple with the coronavirus, Fast Company reports global fashion sales have fallen by 50%. But Telfar, a unisex luxury fashion line, appears to be one of the exceptions. Talfa Clemens is a fashion designer and he is also the founder of Telfa. If you guys don't know about it you guys should know about it it is a tote bag but they also have different sizes of bags they have small sizes and they have really big sizes which is amazing I, well actually while i was reading this uh, the articles for um talfa and talfa callums i was this year like this is actually a really dope brand so we're gonna get into it we really are gonna get into it the voice of this brand kind of reminds me of ubuntu i won't even lie to you while i was reading i was actually like mm, this sounds like Ubuntu, 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 Ubuntu. If you don't know what Ubuntu means, we're going to talk about it at the end of the video, all right? So, Taufa was born to Liberian parents in New York, to be specific, Queens, New York. When he was five, Taufa actually lived with his parents in Liberia with four siblings y'all actually with his mom to be more specific <laughs> he lives with his moms in liberia the family had to move back to the united states because of the second outbreak of the civil war that happened in liberia guys if i look this side it's because the mirror is here so please mind me when i look this side and my notes are on the right by the way if you kind of see me glimpse a little bit that side or if you see me read by the way, if you want more information about Talfa Kellams, please go down to the link. Please go down to the description down below and check the links that I have down there to get more information about the brand and him. But for today, we're going to be talking about the things that really stood out for me. And yeah. In 2002, Clemens decided, well, not he didn't decide, but <laughs> they had to move back to New York and he started his modeling 
Korea. Kind of reminds me of Naomi Addison when it comes to just uh, being in New York and modeling. So there's something, there's, there's, a, there's a theme going on with New York. Is New York where things happen? Guys, tell me. Because also with um, Amy Smilovic, she, when she moved to New York, when she was in New York, that's when she said, you know what, I'm going to start my brand. So is there like, is there, is, is the atmosphere different in New York? In New York? Is the atmosphere different in New York? Is there something in New York that we don't know about that isn't here in any other country? Like, what is it about New York? I know New York is not a country, it's a state and a city, but you get what I mean. In 2003, he started making clothes out of deconstructed and reconstructed vintage clothes. And he sold all these clothes to a boutique in the Lower East Side of New York and also Soho. New York. And then in 2004, that's when he launched his own brand, Talfa. Talfa, 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 honey. Ooh. <laughs> In 2020, Talfa Clements actually won the 2020 CFD Award for American Accessory Designer of the Year. So I'm going to read from one of these articles, a piece from one of these articles. And please, guys, go check out the articles by these beautiful, beautiful journalists and writers. All right. So he says in one of these articles, the style. OK, they say and then he says, all right, <laughs> the style first introduced for fall 2014 is an overnight success many years in the making. And this is what Clement says. He says the inspiration was basically how good people look after they buy something that consumers glow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And honestly, like, when I see people wear the tote bag, tote bag, <laughs> when I see people wear the tote bag and, um, Talfa, obviously, by Talfa, obviously, um, they actually look more classy. I won't even lie to you. They look more, um, professional, yet a bit sporty, and just, they just have this streetwear vibe, but this also, like, chic classy vibe about them when they actually wear the Telfer bag so the logo itself is actually inspired by how one of um, Clement's teachers actually used to write his initials and what she would do is that she would actually write the T and then put the C inside on the chalkboard so that's where he got his inspiration from and decided to you know copy that type of style for his logo so i guess this is like the interesting part of the story is that he actually won such an amazing award in 2020 the first quarter of 2020 and then c19 hits come on imagine working 15 years for 15 years you're working on this brand and you finally get the recognition you finally get the investments you finally get like there's a light shining upon your brand and then boom a whole panorama that has never been here for like a hundred years <laughs> all of a sudden shows up i know it's not funny but like seriously bruh like what after 15 years i'd be pissed but you know they're actually they're actually pretty optimistic about this so um that's that's what i like about them they're very optimistic from the articles that i was reading they're very optimistic about it they're just like you know what it's just time to like kind of chill and then boom like once everything is kind of back to not normal but we're better than we were before then <laughs> you know things will look up of which i believe like in 2021 the tote bag talfa bag is actually it's actually gaining more recognition i only knew about it like at the beginning of the year because of the video that i made at the beginning of the year about tote bags i only started really seeing talfa a lot after that but anyways it's such a cool brand because i like i love their message and their message is the inclusive message is it's not for you it's for everyone come on honey and we're gonna we're gonna speak about it we're gonna speak about it we're gonna speak about the voice message because i think that is so important and it's something that everyone needs to have with when they think about starting a business when they think about starting their own personal brand what is the voice behind your brand so i'm gonna read from this other article that i found i'm gonna read a piece from it and they say the product had even earned a catchy nickname which is the bushwick birkin honey 
they have different sizes by the way so they have like the Birkin size which is the small size right and then the tote bag which is like the huge bag that we usually see so they range from the small size to the big size and it's just I don't like the brand itself is really really cool like if you're an American it would be really nice to support Telfem simply because of their brand message and I mean it's local there you know what I mean um, I wonder if any South African designer actually have a tote bag like if they do I hope it's not that expensive <laughs> honestly speaking I hope it's not that expensive anyways this is what the article says <laughs> back to the article um, the Bushwick Birkin a term coined by makeup artist I don't know how to say this name XYA I just spelled it Rachel who <laughs> in January told the cut the bag had the um, cachet I think that's what you say um, of a Birkin guys if I said that wrong okay <laughs> but for those who don't have Hermes Hermes kind of um, coins in actual fact the label made over two million dollars in revenue in 2019 crazy right crazy you like I don't know like this brand like while I was reading the articles right <laughs> I always have to say that like while I was reading the articles right while I was reading the articles um what I really got is that hard work you can reap a lot through hard work perseverance and patience if you really believe in the message behind the brand and you keep pushing and pushing you will reap even even if you're not Christian you will reap that is just what that's just how the the universe was created that's just how creation was created that's how God made it to be so if you follow some of the laws that are correct which is persevere be patient be patient be I said be patient be patient <laughs> um, you will reap in the end you truly will reap something you will reap a reward that is what is gonna happen so if you're starting a brand or anything like that keep going and don't forget to like don't forget but um, don't be scared to you know rebrand like what Amy Smilovic did with um, Tibby right we're up close and personal now okay boom <laughs> anyways okay what is so amazing about Talfa is that they don't rely on wholesale um, revenue. They actually rely mostly on, well, they actually gain their revenue from website sales because they just have a community of just loyal consumers who really love the message of the brand. This actually brings me to the point of what Radboy actually said in one of the articles that I read. And he spoke about how people don't just buy something for just buying it anymore unless you're broke. Well, in you know, my terms, unless you're broke. <laughs> but people are starting to buy things because of the meaning behind the brand. They're more into the message. It's not about, oh, like, this looks pretty. It's like, okay, where did this actually come from? What is this message? What is, what is behind the brand? What is the message behind the brand? What do they stand for? Are they real? Are they authentic? Who actually made this? Who actually made this, you know? And I think we're moving to a time where things are becoming like people like our generation, my generation. We really want, um, when we buy something, we want to buy it because we're supporting a voice or the, the voice of the brand. We're supporting the voice of the brand. We're supporting the message that they're trying to bring out into this world. That's why we're buying something. And I, I, I love it. I love it because Talfa is about, again, Ubuntu. Um, that's what I got while reading the articles. I just heard the word Ubuntu, right? And all I, like the fact that their message is like, it's not for you, it's for everyone. You know, it's for everyone. I'm gonna get to that point, y'all. I really do, I'll, I'm gonna get to that point. And we, I actually did this live with um, Tsepang on Instagram. You guys should check it out. I'll put it on the screen. And we actually spoke about um, this thing of like how people 
need to understand, as Wan Sepang would say, you need to understand your philosophy. You need to understand your philosophy. Like, what is your philosophy when it comes to anything that you do? Because that's the thing that's going to push you forward. That's the thing that's really going to drive your message, drive your brand. You know what I'm saying? And I usually say, what is your mission? I got a mission in life. What is your mission? When you apply for a job, does it really align with your mission? You know, when God gives you a verse, when you're praying, you know, God reveals certain things about you. Is that thing that you're doing aligned with that thing? Is it aligned with that mission? Is it aligned with what God is saying in your life? Is it aligned with that thing that's burning in your heart? You're never too young to do what you really want to do. You're never too young, okay? You're always going to be on time with the grace of God, all right? With the grace of God, and we really appreciate it. But in any case, what is your mission and what what will people gain from buying your product? What will people gain from um, talking to you, from experiencing you, from just, you know, getting to know you? Because that's how people are going to remember you. How you treat people is how people are going to remember you. That is your true legacy, honestly. What you do on earth is your true legacy. In other words, you need to really be about it if you want to talk about it. You really need to be about it if you want to talk about it to stand by something you need to really dig deep and say y'all like what do i actually stand by like what is that thing that i really am all about you know so if you don't know who who <laughs> if you don't know who rad boy is i'm just gonna read it here rad boy is a partner in the business and he acts as the label's creative director and business brain so he really plays a huge part in Talfa. If you don't, if you did not know about him, I did not know about him <laughs> until I read the articles and I was like, oh, makes sense. At first, the only fans that Talfa Bags really had were club kids, but as it grew, um, socialites such as Sanja Morgan started wearing their bags and she actually wore one of their tote bags on a magazine, on an editorial magazine called Paper Magazine. Was that correct? Let me correct myself there. Sandra Morgan actually wore one of their tote bags, right? In an editorial in magazine, in paper magazine, all right? That's what happened. I don't know what the hell is going on with my English. <laughs> and this happened in March 2019. I'm just gonna read um, some of the stuff that we're reading in the articles because I find them very interesting and honestly, I can't say it in better words because <laughs> today my English is going south just a little bit. But in one of the articles, they say from self towards to award winning, Clemens has created a blueprint for black designers to follow for the years to come. And that is completely true because he like his brand, like he started his brand, I think, back in 2003, 2004, if I'm not if i'm not mistaken but it's been 15 years y'all it's been around 15 years and um his brand is starting to gain recognition and it just speaks upon how if you just keep on pushing bro you'll make it like you really will in, t in September 2017, he partnered with White Castle to design uniforms for 400 franchises. A month later, he designed a capsule collection with the fast food chain and donated all proceeds to bail funds. Wow. For imprisoned teenagers in Rikers Island. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. That's... Yeah, that, that's that's really beautiful. That really touched my heart. That's wow. During that time, the designer won the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund Award and used the money received to produce the shopping bag consistently. Investment, investment, investment. Invest in yourself. Okay. In September of 2020, his achievements reached yet another height as he was honored as the American Accessories Designer of the Year at the CFDA Awards. I can only clap hands, bro. 15 years, guys. 15. Like, imagine believing in something for 15 years, and then finally, boom, things just come together. That's just how the world works, guys. If you, are, if you stand for something, truly and honestly and it's a good thing 
and you're a good person, <laughs> your time will come. Your time will really come. Okay, so I want to do a bit of a deep dive on the actual tagline, not for you, for everyone. And I think this article just speaks upon it really well. And it says, with inclusion at its core, Talfa became one of the first brands to blur the lines between what is seen as masculine and feminine. It's best, <laughs> you know why, okay, you know why I did that? It's because I really like men clothes too, and I find them really nice on women, like if a flat is a woman's body, hello. And if you haven't watched Jerry Lynn, the video that I made on Jerry Lorenzo's um, brand, which is called Fear of God, you guys should definitely go check it out because they also blurred the lines between masculine and feminine like you can really okay this okay, this video is not about him it's not about fear of god okay anyways um it's best known item the shopping bag aka the bushwick Bergen has been seen worn by both men and women alike while the black sends overwhelming support Inclusion does not end at gender. Hmm, I love that. I, I really love that. Cause I believe like I believe, not even I believe, but back in like the 60s, 70s, and 80s, there was only like clothes for specifically women. Like women are supposed to only wear these clothes and men are only supposed to wear these clothes. Like that was the thing, that was the trend. Like you wouldn't really see a man kind of wear women's clothes in a way, or you wouldn't really see women wear men's clothes in a way or there weren't any there wasn't a lot of unisex clothing or unisex accessories whereas nowadays it's like why not <laughs> why not you know in any case um Talfa has touched your everyday style setter government official and your favorite celebrity creating a space where we're all one this reminds me of like St. Mary's um, song, our, um, what is it called again? <sighs> what the hell are they called? Our war cries? Yeah, we're like, we are one, we are one. <laughs> like it reminds me of that when like, while I was reading, when I, when I read where we're all one, I was like, we are one, we are one. It just reminds me of my high school days. While reading this, I just got this, I just felt like saying this on this video is that, um, usually like some people think they're higher than the other person or they're better than the other person simply because they can afford an LV bag or a Gucci bag or any fancy th clothing accessory I don't know right but with the Talfa bag they basically saying that hell no like we're not doing that by the way, if you are a kid and you are watching my videos, you're not supposed to be watching my videos because I did say on YouTube, not for kids. <laughs> basically, like, the towel for back is basically saying, yo, like, no, we're all one. That's it. And I believe in our society, sometimes we just link luxurious clothing to how we treat someone. So if we see that someone wears LV or Gucci or something like that, we're like, we all of a sudden treat them differently. We all of a sudden have a sense of respect for them. And it's like, why are we linking respect and value to clothes? Like to LV, to Gucci, no. You know, that should not be the thing. Like we should respect each other because we're human beings. Every human being holds their own power. Every human being is unique. Every human being has something special about them that they're supposed to bring out into this world. So why are we connecting value to LV and Gucci bags? Like I don't understand. And or Chanel perfume or something like that. Of course Chanel smells really nice. But I don't think that should be the differentiating fact on how we treat people. No, hell no. Like, what the hell is that, guys? Come on. So yeah, with Talfa, it's like, well, hi, I'm good, you're good. <laughs> they bring that, Talfa brings that type of vibe, like, you know, like, 
I look fabulous and you look fabulous and let's just respect one another because we're human beings and we're living, we're breathing and we both can create something that's just amazing on this earth. So like I said, like um, while I was reading these articles, I get this theme of Ubuntu and Ubuntu basically means, according to Google, um, it basically means a quality that includes the essential human virtues, compassion and humanity. But in simple words, like, of which is what I know is I am because you are and that's what I get from Talfa that's what I get from the brand that's what I get from the voice like the voice of the brand is I am because you are I actually saw this article from Global Citizen and I really want to read it out about Ubuntu and it was actually written by Lumelo Sipe Williams on the 19th of October 2018. Sorry for the lighting and everything else. The show must go on, okay? In any case, girl, we sees you. Okay, so let's read this part that I really loved. And she says, this is what she wrote. She wrote, when former president of the United States, Barack Obama, made a speech earlier this year in Johannesburg at the 2018 Nelson Mandela Annual Lecture, he said that Mandela understood the ties that bind the human spirit. Do we still have politicians like that? Because, oh, child. <laughs> oh, I think there are citizens in Africa who still believe in that, but they're just not in this, they're just not in, they just don't have enough influence on what is happening in South Africa right now, but we're just going to pray. Anyways, <laughs> this is what she then says. <clears throat> this is what she then writes, I mean. She writes, there is a word in South Africa, Ubuntu. This is what Obama said, right? There is a word in South Africa, Ubuntu, that describes his greatest gift, his recognition that we are all bound together in ways that can be invisible to the eye that there is a oneness to humanity. That we achieve ourselves by sharing ourselves with others and caring for those around us, Obama said. That is a powerful passage right there about Ubuntu and what it actually means and how we're all connected to one another you know and i think some of us kind of forget that we forget that we're connected we forget that when we disregard someone we disregard ourselves we forget that when we root to someone we root to ourselves because we're all connected <sighs> i mean for example, I am a result of two human beings who decided that, wow, I feel like doing the deed tonight, and then this happened, right? If they did not make that choice at that time, I would not be here. I'm a result of two human beings just like that, I'm an, I'm a, and I am a result of human beings who made certain choices to be where they were at a certain time. For example, my English teachers, my math teachers, they decided to accept that job at that time. And then they met me. I met them when my parents said, you know what, you're gonna go to the school. I am a result of other people's choices as well. We're so connected. Like this other day, I was actually sitting with myself and I was like, bro, I don't really make a choice in anything. <laughs> if we think about it, all I do is just manage things. All we do is just manage things. We don't really make choices, if you think about it. We really don't. We're, we are a result of other people's choices and other people are there because of our choices too, right? Damn, like we really don't control anything. <laughs> we really don't control anything. And this is why, this is why your, your environment is so important because you become whatever environment you were in, right? But obviously it depends on how you take in that environment, how you actually process the things that are happening in your environment. But in certain cases, in just being a human being, just most cases is that 
look, you are a product of your environment. So you choose how you when you get to that age where you can choose what type of environment that you want to be in, use it. Okay? Use that opportunity, okay? Because some people don't have choices because they don't have money to move out, me, or something like that, right? So, <laughs> um, when you have an opportunity to choose where you want to be, use that opportunity and make good choices, all right? I'm so sorry for the sun, but I'm kind of liking it because it's quite hot. Should I come closer? But anyways, we're all connected and we react to whatever is in front of us no matter what and that's what i get from talfa is that you we're connected and we're kind of all the same <laughs> we need to humble ourselves <laughs> and we need to humble ourselves yeah and it's not about you it's about everyone else when you get a gift it's not about you it's about the people you affect. It's not for you. It's for everyone. Simple as that. That's Talfa. That's Talfa. And that is the end of the video, people. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys loved this video and I hope you guys found some sort of inspiration from it. Please share this video, like this video if you have, if you think that anybody needs to hear this, that, you know, I keep going, don't worry, we're all connected. Like, you're not alone, right? That's beautiful. You're not alone, okay? So if you feel like someone needs to hear that, please, like, comment, and share this video, and I'll see you guys in my next video. I don't know how many times I said video. <laughs> video, video, video. Anyways, bye.